Hi. Have a look at this Microsoft Power Automate community thread. So the user asking here is uh, there are two lists. One is in Dataverse and the other one is in SharePoint. So the plan is uh, when an item is removed from Dataverse, I am unable to delete it from the SharePoint list. Okay. So there is a flow here which is which will add or update the items to SharePoint list also. So that means any items will be added in Dataverse, it's going to be reflected in SharePoint. Same for the modification and another one for the deletion also. Uh, also update. Okay. So how do we how do we do this in one flow then? So the plan is okay. So my trigger here is when a row is added, modified or deleted. I got a table in Dataverse called Fruits, and uh, I'm going to add a compose here. Okay, and uh, just map the name then. Right, right. Okay, save the flow now. Okay, flow saved. I'm going back here and to going to add a fruit. Okay, I'm going to add a fruit apple. Save and close. We can see that's you know that's that is in dataverse now. So anytime the flow should uh, trigger here. Here we go. Five seconds ago, that's been triggered. So let's go and have a look. Okay, that's an apple then. So we added that. Our operation was add then, okay? So let's have a look at this in the row, row input then. So in the row input, uh, subscription receipt message scope, nothing there much there. But if you look the show row output, you can see luckily in the body, we got STK attribute here. See that STK message, it's called create there, okay? So let's see the modification process also and see what we get. So I'm going to modify this apple to orange okay save and close refresh it okay here we go that's in dataverse now going back here if we go six seconds ago that's triggered again you can see apple modified to orange show row output again stk messages update okay so that's one way of determining uh, you know determine what operation it is or another way is you could probably split this into two different flows one is just for the delete one for add and modified okay so there are different ways you could do this okay now going back here what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use the expression and say body trigger body If you have STK message, okay. Let's let's see my previous run and uh, what's uh, uh, that's going to return. All right, if we go, that's an update. That's good news then. So this way I could identify what's the operation it is. Now all I need to do here now is add an if condition or a case or whatever your favorite, uh, you know conditions you want to use the action controls then here i am going to use an if statement and i'm going to say here update and then here i could do the you know the update operation of the sharepoint if i want so i could say you know the update action step sharepoint you know update item and then uh, you should be able to map those fields there and update it yeah um, okay, let's uh, let's do that then. Do the update then. Okay, so I'm going to use my SharePoint list, and my SharePoint list is called Fruits as well. Okay, so so for the update, I need to know the ID. Then only I can do the update. Okay, and then only I can map my name also. Name is my, uh, you know, the name of the fruit. Here we go. So uh, let's do the update later. So temporary i'm going to put just one there at the minute let's do the create then that will be the easiest part so i'm going to do another if condition also if the output is equal to 
create okay then here what i want is i want to do a create item create item then uh, you know select the sharepoint name the list name that's the fruits and then under the show advanced options under the title i'm going to say name then okay so let's save that now at the minute okay that's done now so i don't have anything in my sharepoint list yet now going back to dataverse the fruits entity and i'm going to add apple save and close that refresh so that's a new record i have just added okay and uh, just refresh this five seconds ago six seconds ago that's the one flow ran successfully and the operation is create so it won't execute our update condition it should execute the if condition which is true for the create operation and it does create a record in sharepoint okay so here we go apple is here but how what happens if i am going to update or delete so how do i know which record is which so it's quite a tricky one here to update it or delete so let me go back and show you here again so for for the update we need the id of the record so the best thing to do here is whenever we create an item we will store the store the identifier of the dataverse record in sharepoint also okay so for that i am going to add a single add a column single line of text and just call id okay and that id single line of text is good here adding that that's done now going back to the flow under the create item i need to refresh my flow again so let's go back edit the flow again hopefully that should refresh that because i added the new column so you can't be able to see it here we go the id is here so now i need to map the fruit id then here so if i search look for the fruit unique unique identifier that's the key i'm going to add here okay and save it okay flow saved successfully i'm going to add a new item now here all right okay so i'm going to add i'm going to add um, uh, grapes save and close refresh it okay now it should appear here any minute that now so let me refresh that page no not yet the flow is not run it okay it's done now one second ago so if i go back here and refresh the page now here we go that's a guide now see that's a guide of your dataverse then so now it's quite easy to filter against it so what i could do now here is if i go back to my flow now under my update operation here so here it's an update then so under the update operation what i could do here is i could do the list list uh, operation then so here i could do uh, say something like uh, sharepoint okay list items or get items and uh, look for the sharepoint site name again it's the same thing fruits but what we are going to do here is we are going to say i'm going to i got an id filter query is equal to the identifier of the trigger which is the fruit here we go so this way i know that what item it is so it's, it's always going to be one only because it's a unique id that so the next thing is you can drag and drop the update item here and then you could remove this id one which i did earlier 
and mapping the ID from the get items. It is going to put a apply to each loop now because the get items it, it can return more than one values. That's the reason. But in this case, it's always going to be one record only because we are validating against a unique identifier. Okay, so let's save that record now. Okay, I saved the record now and uh, going back to the record which contains the ID that is grapes. So I'm going to modify the grapes. Okay, and uh, change that to just change into Apple one then here. Yeah, I got another Apple. There. That's the reason. Okay, right. That's done. So that's changed now. So let's see the flow run or not. No, not yet. Okay, two seconds ago it ran successfully. Now this should change to Apple one now. Let's see. When I refresh it, that didn't. Okay, let's have a look. What went wrong there then? So I'm going to go to the last run. Yes, that's update. Is that found record? Yes, it found record. ID is equal to that. But let's see, is that ID that or not? ID is equal to that. Yeah, it is. That's the right uh, record it is. But it didn't update it. That's pretty strange. Okay, let me look that again. Ah, okay, it's my bad actually. Uh, I shouldn't have used the ID as this ID because there's an internal ID also. So it's better to use, uh, you know, a different name always. So in this instance, what I will do is I'll go to the list items. See that ID there. So that ID is a single line of text, but there is an internal ID always there for the records. So let me see this, what this ID is called. I click the ID column name here. Okay, it comes up with the ID with a zero there. See that? That's what happens if you do the same field name. So what I could do is hopefully I could go here and say, ID zero here like that and uh, put two single quotes again. I removed that earlier. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to try to run this again. Yeah. Always use a unique um, uh, name of the column. Um, otherwise, you can still use it, but you need to go to the settings and go to the URL and at the end, you can see here field equals ID zero. That's the one you need to use in your filter query then in your flow. Okay, so the flow ran successfully this time. Let's see the apply to each. Here we go. That's been updated now. So if I go back here to my SharePoint list now, under the fruits, here we go. That's been updated to Apple one now. So to delete, it's again, it's a simple process now. So this is for the update, uh, sorry, the create. So the no part is for the create. This is for the update part. But what we, we could do here is minimize this. And um, we could do an operation here, additional if condition operation here. And under the if condition operation, I could say again the output. I want to make sure is equal to delete. And if it not, uh, delete that means it's an update that's under the no condition then and then uh, here under the share point uh, connector again use the delete delete item and what we could do here is we could say uh, set the site name sorry and uh, set the fruits list name and the ID so ID is coming again from that same filter you know some you I'm reusing that get item um, the for get items for that uh, that action step here just to make sure you know what operations I want to do so that I need to add an additional check here whether it's an update or a delete yeah and then here the ID I could use again the get items ID so it's a similar process as this one but only difference here is it's a delete one, but again, it's going to put an apply to each here. Okay, so just save that flow now. Right, flow successfully saved. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to Apple one here in Dataverse. I'm going to say delete fruit. 
okay that's gone now so hopefully flow should run now any minute four seconds six seconds ago it's ran successfully let's have a look at the run history so the operation is delete so that means this is not update ah that's my bad it's went to the went to the if condition of the create then sorry so let me correct that now uh, so here I'm going to extend the condition again here with an output is equal to delete also There we go and use an or condition or operator there. That's it. So save that So that messed up my My update probably here. I, I probably hope uh, Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. So it's Apple. Yeah, it's updated only with the same one. That's okay right so now um, i'm going to go back to okay let's create a new one okay that's easier than here yeah, okay okay i'm going to create the grapes here save and close right Let's refresh this. Okay, seven seconds ago. Is that our flow then? It should be. Yep. So here we go. Grapes created now. So going back to SharePoint now, it should have grapes here with that ID there. Here we go. That's there now. Now the next thing is I'm going to modify the grapes to grapes 2 now okay let's see the update is going to work or not so that's a grape 2 and run history going back here six seconds ago that's us now i think yep yeah. so open that so that's true So that's true now and uh, so that means it's an update uh, let's see the condition here we are checking whether it's a delete operation it's not so it's going to the update item and it's updated that so that means it should be grape 2 now here we go that's grape 2 now let me refresh it again just to make sure that's grape 2 yes okay the one more test we need to do here now is i need to go back and delete the record now so i'm going to select the record grape 2 and deleting it Okay, that's done now. Going back here again and refreshing the column now. Let's see, it's three seconds ago. That's how one it is. And now that's uh, not a create, but it's a it's an update or a create operation. That's why it is a true one, true operation. Then now here we're making sure. Okay, that's a delete operation and that is deleting the item now. So that means it should go on from here, the grape two, and I'm going to refresh now. There we go, that's gone. So that's a technique you need to use here. So the key here is you need to determine what type of an SDK operation it is. So the syntax you need to use there is trigger body with the two brackets, question mark, and the square brackets, SDK message. If you're struggling with that, always look the run history. The run history always reveals that what uh, you know what is the scheme name here so click on the row output and here you should be able to see that see the sdk message that is a delete operation we did the last one yeah okay so hope that makes sense and um, it is useful also one thing you noticed here is whenever you delete an item from uh, dataverse it only gives you the id of the record only there is it won't return any of the other schema items what's been deleted okay so that's something you need to remember that as well okay thanks for watching